All right, guys, so in light of Biden's State of Union address, okay, and the disasters that is going on in this country domestically, whether we're talking about gas prices, general inflation, supply chain crisis, border crisis, crime crisis, we just got a crisis all over the place, okay? And now we got crisis abroad, right? The first crisis was Afghanistan. Now we got the crisis of Ukraine and Russia, right? I'm pretty sure a whole lot of people are looking at what's happening right now to this country and the things that happen in this country, and uh, they're having some regrets about who they voted for in 2020 okay uh because according to kamala <laughs> right this is what they voted for okay they voted for all of these crises and they're probably going back and thinking hey you know what mean tweets is probably not that bad okay i think that trump <laughs> being in office wouldn't have been so bad okay we quickly found out that trump was not the cause of all of our problems like the mainstream liberal media tried to say okay uh so with that being said again i'm pretty sure there are a lot of people that are having buyer's remorse in regards to their vote okay i've said this and i'll say it again what is happening right now in the Biden administration specifically really with this ukraine russia uh crisis is the biggest advertisement for trump in 2024 okay it really is it really is i think a whole lot of people even people that don't like trump that are more moderate maybe even you know center left maybe thinking you know what I, I would rather have that guy trump back in office okay you know I, I i don't like him but times was good under trump right times was real good under trump okay uh so with that being said that leads me to this video right here which i stumbled across from this guy named david lucas who apparently is a comedian and i have never heard of this guy before until i randomly stumbled across this video uh in which he does stand up comedy uh at a place that is full of what it seems to be white liberals okay and uh this guy isn't exactly <laughs> liberal or so or put it this way he ain't exactly a filling joe biden right and uh he's gonna talk about it in this comedy uh skit here and i find the audience reaction to what he's saying to be so hilarious right because they quickly found out that uh this guy <laughs> is not on the democrat plantation okay i really don't like using that analogy but i i just find it in this situation to be appropriate because we are talking about comedy and we're trying to be funny right we're trying to be funny okay so uh with that being said let's go ahead and get into this am i the only uh black person who misses trump yes. <laughs> the only one yes. how i love <laughs> Bro, don't you just love how a black comedian goes on stage and says, am I the only black person that misses Trump? And white liberals are saying, yes, right? You are, in fact, the only black person that misses Trump. <laughs> like, <laughs> good. I, you, you love it how, how white liberals are so quick to tell black people what they think. <laughs> Okay, yes, you in fact are the only black person that misses Trump because the black people I know, uh, they don't like conservatives, right? They don't like Trump, okay? Black people are supposed to hate Trump. You're supposed to hate Trump, okay? Uh, so I, I, I find that to be absolutely hilarious and genius how, you know, he kind of opens up uh, with that question to the audience. Again, it, it just gives you insight into how white liberals think okay, about how black people are supposed to think, right, they're not supposed to answer that question, right, you're not supposed to answer that question, because you're not black, so how would you know, okay, but they answered anyways, okay, which I find to be hilarious. Love Trump. In 2020, that nigga was my sugar daddy, how do y'all... <laughs> How do y'all not love Trump? He was dropping $600 payments every two weeks. I felt like a bad bitch. That's... <laughs> but Trump really made me a fan when he started doing those uh, Address the Nations, because we didn't have no entertainment, no live sports. <laughs> All we had was Trump every Thursday. Facts. Facts. And this nigga got funnier and funnier. <laughs> I'm like, who the fuck writing for you, bro? You way too, <laughs> you way too funny right now. <laughs> he would actually get on TV and say the craziest shit you ever heard in your life. This nigga got on TV one time and said, I've talked to thousands of governors. 
<laughs> I'm like, nigga, we got 50 states. <laughs> How the fuck did you talk to thousands of governors? The funniest shit he ever said is when he got on TV and said, uh, people are dying that have never died before. <laughs> He talking about how Trump be exaggerating. Low-key, high-key, really. Trump do be exaggerating, though. Right? He'll be saying something. He'll be talking about his accomplishments. He'll be like, it was the greatest thing ever. The greatest thing that you've ever seen. Right? You've never seen anything like it. <laughs> it's the greatest thing ever. Right? <laughs> I just find it to be hilarious. Okay? Because he do be exaggerating sometimes. But I like it. Right? I like it. Because, I mean, at, at the end of the day, I mean, look. The guy accomplished a lot. Right. I mean, he says like, yo, we had the greatest economy we've ever seen. Right. And, you know, hey, even though it, it may or may not be an exaggeration, it ain't too far off. Right. It ain't too far off. OK. When uh, he was in office, we, we did have an amazing economy. OK. So I get what he was trying to say, but a lot of times <laughs> he would be exaggerated. So that's what he's getting at here. I'm like, nigga, that's normally how it works. You... <laughs> Unless we're talking about The Walking Dead, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know, bro. I, I have zero faith in Joe Biden. I have zero faith in that nigga. Like, oh, I don't know how y'all voted out Trump to vote in Andy Griffith. I don't know how the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> How did y'all niggas let him sleepwalk into the White House? How the fuck? We still try to figure that out, bro. <laughs> I just can't have faith in a president that trips three times going upstairs. <laughs> you put him on your absentee ballot, bro. Again, we still try to figure that out, bro. But, but uh, Biden's senior advisor said that the first thing that he wants to do is work on getting people of color reparations. And as a nigga, I don't want no fucking reparations. I don't either. But... <laughs> Me personally, I feel like the moment they give niggas money, money will no longer have any value. <laughs> I guarantee you, the first time they talked about putting Harriet Tubman on the 20 is when Bitcoin was invented. <laughs> Like, hey, they talking about putting niggas on money. What's that cryptocurrency shit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I thought that clip was great. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's funny because uh, you don't see stuff like that too often, right? Like, a black comedian comes out and, like, it's, like, openly, like, oh, yeah, like, I support Trump. But I do think a lot of people, particularly black men feel the exact same way this guy feels okay i'm pretty sure a whole lot of black men out there feel that way okay because in 2020 uh despite what happened the exit polls indicated that uh more non-white men were starting to vote republican right starting to vote trump right and i think that once you take your emotions out of it okay i think a lot of men kind of see the appeal of trump right they see the appeal of having somebody that exudes strength in confidence in office instead of weakness like what we have here right and i feel like a whole lot of people are looking at this situation that happened in afghanistan that's happening right now with russia and they're saying like wow i mean nobody fears us on the world stage right nobody fears on the world stage because we we don't have an alpha dog in office anymore we don't have somebody that's in there that, that that's really you know showing the world that hey we're not to be played with okay and somebody in office that actually really understands the economy, understands, you know, how to create jobs and how to put Americans to work, right? I think people are really starting to understand the important things, okay? And see, that's the thing. And, and because, because when it comes to the women, though, it's a little bit different. But again, you know, I'm not trying to <laughs> sound sexist here, but I'm just saying, I think a part of it is that it's harder for women to take their emotions out of it. Okay, it's easier to appeal to them with, oh, you know, we got to, you know, worry about this group and that group and, you know, and all a bunch of stuff that don't matter, right? <laughs> and when at the end of the day, dudes are like, okay, are we protected? Are we safe? Are we creating jobs? How's the economy, <laughs> right? The things that actually really matter, right? <laughs> That's what really matters. So, again, I, I find it hilarious, this skit and, and how this guy is just like openly like, you know, chastising like white liberals and whatnot and 
uh, I'm pretty sure they were uncomfortable. But that's what comedy is supposed to be. It's supposed to make people uncomfortable. Okay, it's supposed to make them uncomfortable, right? So I, I thought that little skit was hilarious, and uh, I encourage people to, to check out his stuff because his other stuff is is pretty decent too. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.